Hey, so I've gotten lots of requests for a video that shows the full infusion process. So I'm not going to show the whole process because once you start, you're seriously just sitting there for an hour and a half. And so there's nothing to see, but I am going to show you the entire setup process and getting the infusions in so that you can know what that looks like. So <clears throat> there's a whole lot to set up. This is the first thing, which is actually the instruction pad, but it also gives you a space to work. Before you get started, you wanna make sure that you wash your hands really well. Pretty obvious. Um, and then this is my sharp spin that everything will go in at the end. Um, and what I do is I empty this entire bag, which is everything I need for my medications, except the medication itself, onto this pad. And so then I'm able to just access it really, really easily. And now I take the bag and I just lean it up against the sharp spin because it turns into a trash receptacle for the many, many pieces of this process. Um, a few things that are already set up, I've already got my um, tape and scissors over next to the chair that I sit in to do infusions. You don't have to sit down, you can move around, but I find that my stomach gets a lot sore if I move around. And so it's easier if I just sit for the entire thing. So I do it right before bed because you get tired, really tired while you're doing it. Um, and so then I can just go crawl in bed when I'm finished. So I've already taken medicine for the night, brushed my teeth, washed my face, everything. Um, so I'm ready to infuse. The reason I have tape and scissors over by the recliner is because when you pull the needles out of your stomach, obviously you want to cover them. Sometimes there's blood, there's actually usually not. It's mostly that you don't wanna let any of the solution from the infusions come back out. Um, so I used to use little mini band-aids, but I started having very mild reactions to the band-aids. And so they told me to switch to tape. And so that's what I do. Like. Um, like medical tape, not like scotch tape. <clears throat> then sterilize alcohol pads um, because obviously you wanna sterilize everything that you do. Um, again, already washed my hands really well. Then you have a log book that you put everything in. So you log each infusion. Um, you say what medications you've taken. Uh, so for me, that's Benadryl and Tylenol, um, which is what the pharmacy has me take before I get started. Um, and you log the date, which I don't even know. Um, Alexa, what's today's date? It's Tuesday, April 7th. It's April 7th, y'all. Um, April 7th, 2020. Um, and you log the time that the infusion starts, which in theory, I should wait until it's time, but just looking at the clock, I'm going to go with, it'll probably be, um, 8.50. And then I'll also log the time it ended. Um, and then you also log how you're feeling after the infusion, if you have any allergic reactions, etc. So I have three boxes of medicine because of the dosages that I take. So I take 13 grams. Um, so I have a 10 gram, a one gram and a two gram. And I've had the medicine boxes sitting out um, for about two and a half hours now because you want them to get to room temperature or otherwise you will have a lot more pain in your stomach, um, inject infusion, sight pain, um, like more stinging when you're doing infusions. I don't really feel them going in very often, but if you let the medicine get too cold, you will feel it. Um, and then also soreness the day after. Uh, so you wanna let the medicine get to room temperature if possible. I did not put the boxes, you might notice, in my little trash baggie because they're the only part of this process that's recyclable. Um, and then each jar, has a little label that you peel off and put into your logbook so that, I don't know, whoever is looking at your logbook, um, you take it with doc to doctor's appointments with you, uh, the, whatever doctor manages the infusion medication, not like every doctor's appointment. Um, but then they're able to see what lots you've taken, um, all that jazz. So they have all the information that they need. I was taught by the nurse to do all of this once I started, but I found that I'd much rather just get it done before I put the needles into my stomach. I don't really like standing over a log book trying to figure things out once I have done that. I'd rather just go sit down. Uh, 
Then one other thing we're seeing, so you can infuse this particular medication into your abdomen, um, your, I don't even know what you call that, like right above your butt basically, your inner and upper thigh or the back of your arms. Um, so I do my abdomen because that's the easiest to see and it's just what I'm the most comfortable with. I know a lot of people who also do the upper legs. I don't know anyone who does any of the other areas, but I'm sure they're out there. Um, and so you mark each week where you, or each infusion, some people infuse more than once a week, um, but you mark each infusion where you infuse so that you're able to make sure that you don't hit the same spots multiple times in a row because that will cause a lot more soreness. You also have to be careful when you infuse to make sure you're not on a mole or a freckle or a stretch mark or anything like that um, because you wanna make sure that the needles get in the way they're supposed to. Um, <laughs> but I did my belly and I was like, oh no, stretch marks. I'm never gonna be able to find a spot. Um, and my nurse looked at my post baby stretch marks and she was like, Shh, no, those aren't a big deal. So I guess they have to be pretty major. Um, so this is the bag of everything that I need. Um, I will show you just so you know. Um, this is extra supplies that I have to have. And this is an EpiPen, actually two EpiPens. Highly unlikely that anyone doing infusions like this will ever need the EpiPen, um, unless you're someone who regularly has anaphylaxis, but um, you have to have them just in case. So dump everything out on the bin and then I'll show it to you as I get to it. So the first thing that you wanna open is this, which is your sterile pad. So everything that is going to touch my body will first touch, go onto this sterile pad. So I don't actually open anything anywhere else except directly onto this pad because it has no germs, no bacteria, no nothing, it's awesome. Um, so the only things that could get on it are what is on my hands, which again, I've already washed. So we'll put the sterile pad down. And then next, I just like to open everything so I have it already. Um, so first thing I do is just pop the lids off of the canisters of medicine. I will alcohol wipe the tops before I take the liquid out, but not there yet. Um, so that all goes in the trash bag. Um, then open the tubing. So this is what takes the liquid, it's a gel, a gel is really a better word, um, from my big giant syringes that I'm about to open um, into the needles that go into my stomach. So there are little teeny tiny needles at the end of this, and I'll show you that because I know that's probably the part that a lot of you are really curious about, but I can't show you as well as you're gonna wanna see until I am actually about to put them in my stomach. So that's gonna be another minute. Um, this is gonna look like a lot, by the way. Like there are a lot of steps here and there are, the setup is definitely my least favorite part, but you learn it super, super, super quickly. So I had the nurse come three times and the first time she did it for me and showed me the second time I did it while she kind of walked me through it and the third time I did it completely myself and she just watched and said okay great you got it um it's really honestly pretty easy because you're given all the parts you need in individual bags and so it's kind of hard to screw it up um so there are two giant syringes um, I have two specifically because of my dosage. Um, so each syringe is 10 grams and I take 13 grams. So I need the double syringe. Um, some people have more, some people have less. Again, it just depends on your dosage. And then this guy is the connection between the syringes and the rest of the tubing. Um, these little red caps go on the ends of the syringes. So one, um, the first syringe that I'll put the solution in will be the one that I use second. And so I'll put a red cap on that. Um, uh, and then when I go to switch out the syringes, I'll use the other red cap. So I'll actually end up taking it with me over to my chair where I'm going to sit. Um, almost finally, close to done here with all the equipment. Um, we have these, which are the 
needles, for lack of a better word. This is what gets the solution from its bottle into the syringe. Um, so it has caps on them that I'll take off. When the time comes, again, I have two because you have one needle per syringe, not per bottle. Um, and then these are the bandages that I use. So there are bandages, I can show you, um, that came originally with everything and they still come with each tubing pack. Um, so this is what you get, but they I have a really bad skin reaction to those. And so these are like super hypersensitive bandages uh, and I can put these on no problem. Bandage is probably not the best word for me to be using. You don't actually need a bandage. Um, basically what it is, is it tapes the needles on so that everything stays in place throughout the infusion. So it's again, part of what gives you the ability to get up and move around, even though I don't choose to get up and move around. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pre-open all of those because it's just easier if everything is open. <clears throat> all right. Easy peasy. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the medication into the syringes, which I will then place into this, which is my pump. Um, and I'll show you how that works when I get it started. So we want to sterile wipe the top of each lid. I like to do all three of them at once so I don't forget which one I've done. Um, you use a separate sterile wipe for every single lid. I was told that on my skin that's really not as necessary, but for the lids it really is. So that's what I do. Um, you don't want to take something that was on one lid and move it to another. So we want to make sure we sterile wipe it. These are alcohol wipes and alcohol apparently from what the nurse told me dries really fast. So I don't have to worry about getting any in my system. Then I'm going to put this transfer unit, whatever that's called, um, onto the syringe. So take the blue cap off of it and it screws right in here. Um, so then I'm going to take the cap off here, toss the cap. What you want to do, fill about 20 milliliters grams, sorry, 20 grams into the syringe because Hyzentra, the medicine I take, is really, really, really viscous and so it's hard to get out. And so you push that air in and somehow that makes it easier for you to get out. And then you just pull it down and you want to get every bit of the solution out. And again, it's kind of slow because it's so viscous. Um, depending on what medication you're having to infuse, it might not be this way and you might not need the air in it, but for the one that I take, it's really, really, really important. Um, the canister, as you see, kind of fills with bubbles and that's okay. It's also okay if you have bubbles in your syringe or if you get, there you go, you can see the bubbles there. Um, and it's okay if you have air in there, it doesn't hurt anything like it would with the shot. Um, so now we're finished with this little head. So we're going to trash it and we're gonna put this cap on because I will infuse this one second. I like to do the smaller one first just because then I'm done with the transfer and uh, I don't have to change anything later. So, <clears throat> We're going to do the other syringes. The smaller ones are slightly more complicated because you have to really watch the head of um, <clears throat> the transfer needle. So this tip, uh, you want to make sure that you get it in where you can get every bit of the solution, which can be tricky. Um, pro tip, because I learned the hard way on this one, make sure when you push the air in that you still have the syringe upside down and the canister right side up. Otherwise, you might get a bunch of sticky gel that you really want in your body coming out this side thing. At least that's what happened to me. Um, so you can pull normally and easily at the beginning. And then I don't know that you can see this on the screen, but we're getting kind of close to the tip. So I've got to pull the tip really, really close to the bottom of the canister to make sure that I get all of the gel even remotely possible out. Sometimes that does end up meaning you get some gel on your hands that falls out the side. And if that happens, you're gonna wanna go wash your hands again because it's super duper sticky. Um, again, it's fine if there's air in it. So that really helps this process that it's okay if you get a little bit of air in it. All right, 
and we're done. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start attaching the tubing. So this is the tubing connector. This is the major piece of tubing and this is the tubing connector. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put this connector onto the syringe I'm going to use first. And then I've got to be really careful to get it tight enough that I don't lose any gel, but not too tight because otherwise I can't get it off, which is not cool um, because it's the only one I have. I do have an extra in that spare bag, but I've tried to never use it um, because I'm going to have to switch syringes after about 25 minutes into this. And so it's really important that you can get this off. Um, <clears throat> then I'm going to open the edge of this and I'm going to prime the tubing. So basically I want to make sure that the solution can get through. You can let some bubble out the top here. I just watch to make sure it doesn't because I don't want to lose any of this special magic. Um, and so then we put the rest of the tubing on the tubing connector. This you can get super tight because it's not going to change. And then we want to prime the rest of the tubing, which basically just means I'm going to start squirting the gel and I'm going to watch until it gets to my fingers, which there's no way you can see on camera, but I can see it um, and that's what matters. And so now it's at my fingers, which means it's close to the edge. That's what we need. We're good to go. So now we get to start the actual fun part, which is sticking yourself with needles in the stomach. So I straight up 90s girl this because it's just the easiest way to see and do it. And I'm gonna look and see where I infused last time just to not get too close. So last time I was really far out high on my stomach, really close and low. Um, and you don't wanna let the needles get too close together. So I'm probably gonna aim for like these spots um, and we'll see how that goes. So a little sterile wipe here. Um, one thing I'm also doing is just visually checking. Do I see any sign of having infused oftentimes? You can see a, um, I'm going to end up needing another sterile wipe because I'm talking to you and I'm not going to remember where I did that. Um, a lot of times you're actually able to see a little spot, a little mark where you're like, oh, that's where the needle was last time. Um, and if you use the round band-aids, I was able to often see those for weeks, but sometimes they would get aggravated. And so I stopped using those. So. This is what a lot of people want to know. How big is this? So the needle is actually smaller than what you're seeing here. Um, I don't know if you can even tell. Yeah, you need my hand for reference. There we go. It's a really small needle. I mean, it's not fun to stick a needle into yourself, but it really is pretty small. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna re-sterile light because I don't remember exactly where I was. Um, you're gonna pinch that. Stick it straight into the fat and then put a piece of tape over it. This peels off and that's all. Um, from the distance of the camera, you can barely even see it. So that's great. Uh, and then I'm just gonna do that three more times. So one on each side, I'm kind of going toward the middle for this particular set of infusions of my stomach uh, because I haven't been there in a while. I will say the closer it gets to your belly button, for me, the more it hurts. And so like that one, I actually felt this prick and I also will feel uh, when the medication starts to go in, it'll feel kind of like a bee sting. Um, and then a few random times during the infusion, the same thing, other than that, you Honestly, you can kind of forget that it's happening, um, which is pretty weird. But you get these random like, oh, there it is. And that's when it feels like a bee is stinging you. Um, so I've done two. Now I'm going to do the two on the other side. And since I'm not trying to show you a needle up close, um, I can do these a little bit faster. So that spot looks good. And maybe right here. Um, okay. Pull the edge off the needle, pinch the skin. Again, that one's gonna hurt a little more because it's closer to the belly button. You always wanna be at least an inch away 
from your belly button. And I don't know if that has anything to do with how well the medication infuses or if it's just all about your stomach's reaction. But I can tell you from a just reactionary pain perspective, it's really, this isn't painful like it seems. Um, it's not fun, but it's not painful. Um, but I wouldn't want it any closer to my belly button. And then where do you put that second? Like pinch of skin, put it in. That one I didn't even notice. Um, doing it out further tends to work well for me. I don't know if that's universal or if that's just me. And so I'll take them on. There are people who don't take them on. That would bother me personally. I like to know that they're in there and they're not going anywhere. It makes me not worry. Um, this one I'm having trouble getting off. There we go. Sometimes this sticks to the back of the tape. So there we go. That's it, they're all in there. I felt that, that like little pinch of tightening in my stomach so I could stand up. Um, no ab workout tomorrow. Never plan to do an ab workout the day after an infusion. So then I stick it into this gizmo, which is my pump. Turn it on. It automatically brings a little pressure piece up to the back of the syringe. Now it's gonna start putting it in. I'll feel a little pinch in. There it is. And so now the infusion's happening. And when this finishes, I will go ahead and switch to this one. And then I'll just have to pull these out, throw everything in a sharp jar, cover my stomach, and I'm good. Um, final note, always have water with you to hydrate. Side effects. I've never had major side effects. Pretty much a little bit of itching around sites, which is why I changed um, tape type and why I changed well this tape type and then to tape instead of band-aids at the end um, and then lethargy um, which is and that's why I do it at nighttime but there are some other side effects that people can have headaches nausea things like that I've never had any of them uh, but the more you hydrate the less you feel side effects um, and that is also true in terms of I can't think of the word I'm looking for, you guys, in terms of being tired, and in terms of pain the next day. I don't understand it, but I swear I have less pain, um, like soreness, like I've worked out too hard or something when I'm um, have hydrated. So drink lots of water during the infusion, and I'll be done in about an hour and a half. So that's it. Thanks.